Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is module 10, lesson one, adding and subtracting polynomials. After this lesson, you need to be able to identify and write polynomials by using the standard form and add and subtract polynomials. Let's learn types of polynomials. A polynomial is a monomial or the sum of two or more monomials. Some polynomials have special names. First, we have just a monomial, and we could have a number like three, a variable like x, or a product of a number and one or more variables. So it could be like 3x, or even say 3xy. Regardless of what it looks like, a monomial is only gonna have one term. So you're not gonna see any plus signs or minus signs in a monomial. A binomial is the sum of two monomials. So if we see something like 3x plus another number, so in this I have two monomials, and together they make a binomial. And then a trinomial, notice the prefixes in these, bi meaning two, tri means three, would be something that looks like this. Maybe you have five x to the second power plus four x minus six. There are three monomials here that are separated by pluses and minuses. That would make a trinomial. Within any of the monomials, so if it's just a monomial in the sense it's by itself, or any of the terms in a binomial, a trinomial, or other polynomials, when we're talking about the degree, that means that you are adding all of the exponents of the variables within that specific term. So let's say you had 3x squared. The degree of the exponents here would just be 2. If you had more than one variable, so let's say you had 5x squared y to the fourth, once you start having more than one variable, then we're going to combine and add them together. So this would be 2 and 4, so it would have a degree of 6. This one was 2, this one's 6. If we have just a variable with no exponent, it's a hidden one, so that would be a degree of 1. And if it's a constant term, so just a number, there is no variable, which means it has no exponent, so this would be a degree of 0. The degree of the monomials is going to be an important thing to learn, as that is how we are going to name polynomials. The degree of a polynomial is going to be the greatest degree from any of the monomial terms. So we're going to use what we just saw with the monomials, find the degree for everything, Whichever has the highest, that will be the degree of the polynomial. And as I just said, that is going to be needed to name these polynomials. So if we're going through, the polynomial has a degree of zero. So this would just be like five. There's no variable. This would be called a constant term. If we're going through and the monomial has a term with a variable that has just a one as the exponent, the degree would be one. This is called a linear term. As if you were to graph it, it would make a straight line, linear. Next, if we have a exponent degree of 2, it is called quadratic. If we happen to see one that has an exponent of 3 up here, that would be cubic. And then some other ones that you might see if you say had 6x to the fourth, the highest degree was a 4, that's called quartic. If you had something to the fifth power, that would be quintic, and so on. And then anything 6 or higher, we can just say 6th degree, 7th degree, 8th degree, and so on. As we're going through these, Another thing that's going to be important to do is be able to put your polynomial into standard form. And that is going to use the degrees of each of the terms. Standard form just means that it has the variable with their exponent degrees in order from least to greatest. So if we had something with an x to the third, that would come before something with an x to the second, that would come before something with an x to the first, and it would come before the number. So this would be in order from least to greatest with the constant, the one with no variable, being at the end. And another part with standard form, once they're in order, if there's a number out front, Whatever terms in the front, that number in is called the leading coefficient because it is leading the way. Example one, identify polynomials. Determine whether each expression is a polynomial. If it is a polynomial, find the degree and determine whether it is a monomial, binomial, or trinomial. A, we have 8ab minus 2c. So this here is the sum of two monomials. We have a monomial of 8ab and we have a monomial of negative 2c. For these, the sign that connects them goes with the one after it. So positive 8ab, negative 2c. These are both monomials, so this is a polynomial. And then what degree is it? Well, we need to look at both things. These both have ones, so together that would be a two. This only has one. Which one is larger? Two. So this is a second degree, or quadratic, and it's a binomial since there are two monomials there. In b, we just have negative 11.25. This is also a polynomial, and it has a degree of zero, since there is no variable. And since there's only one term, it would be a monomial. In C, if we were to rewrite this first part, 2x to the negative 2, it would be equivalent to 2 over x to the second power. 
when we were doing exponent rules, we learned the word monomial to begin with. And a monomial cannot have division in it. So this first part with a negative exponent is not a monomial. So if you see a negative exponent, it is not going to be a polynomial, no matter what the rest of it looks like. In D, here we have 9x to the third power, and then minus 8x, positive 5x, and minus 27. We can combine these like terms. So the simplest form would be 9x to the third minus 3x minus 27. That is the sum of three monomials. All of our exponents are positive. This is a polynomial. What's our highest exponent? Three. So this would be a third degree or cubic. And three monomials put together would be a trinomial. Last, if we have 2m squared plus 2mn minus n squared, this again is the sum of one, two, three monomials. So this is a polynomial. The degree, though, this time, the highest one is 2. Even in the middle here with 1 and 1, it's 2. So this is a second degree or quadratic trinomial. Check your understanding. Determine whether each expression is a polynomial. And if it's a polynomial, what is the degree? And is it a monomial, binomial, or trinomial? If it is not a polynomial, then you do not need to fill in the degree or classification. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. First, are they polynomials? A is not. We have a negative exponent. It is not a polynomial. The other ones are all polynomials. Their degree, that first one, since it was negative, we can't fill in. But B, the highest exponent is 3, so it's a third degree, and it has three terms, so it's a trinomial. C has one term, so it's a monomial, and there's a hidden one there, so it's first degree. And the last one is also first degree, but with two terms, so it is a binomial. Example two, standard form of a polynomial. Write 4x plus 12 plus 2x to the third power minus 3x to the second power in standard form. Identify the leading coefficient. So to write in standard form, we're going to rewrite these in order from least to greatest. If we're looking through here, I'm going to fill in the degrees of everything. So this has a degree of 1, this has a degree of 0, this has a degree of 3, and that has a degree of 2. And I can tell again just by looking at the exponents. Now I'm going to put them in order from least to greatest. And when we're doing this, we need to be careful that we're taking the sign that's in front of our term. If and when we're moving the one out front, remember, there's a hidden positive or plus out front. So positive 2x to the third would go first. Then I have my x to the second power with the minus out front, so the minus stays with it. Then I would have my x to the first with the positive, which is why I wrote it out front there, so plus 4x. And then finally, last, we would have plus 12. So this would be now in standard form because that is going from the greatest exponent degree to the least exponent degree. And then our leading coefficient, once it's in order, it's that coefficient out front, so it is 2. Check your understanding. Write the polynomial shown in standard form. Then identify the leading coefficient of the polynomial. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, in standard form, it would be negative b to the third power minus 10b to the second power plus 5b plus 35. The 3 is our highest. It goes first with the sign before it. Then we have our minus 10. This one has a power of 1, and then finally a 0 exponent. Our leading coefficient, then, is the number that's in front of our first term. It's a negative with no number. It is negative 1. A common mistake is just to use the number that is there to begin with, but that is not correct. So make sure you put it in standard form first. Let's learn. Adding polynomials. Now that we know how to put our polynomials in standard form, that is going to become a helpful part for adding and subtracting polynomials, as essentially what we're going to be doing is combining like terms. When we're doing adding and later subtracting, there are going to be two methods that we can use. One is the horizontal method, which honestly is my least favorite method of the two, where we just group like terms together and combine them. So here we can see in orange, we had 3x and 2x squared. Combined together, we'd have 5 total x to the second powers. Notice I only added the coefficients, those numbers. I did not do anything with the exponents. Then I'm going to do the same thing with my just x's, so my first powers. 9x plus 4x combined is 13x. And then finally, with my constants, 27 and minus 12. So 27 and minus 12 is 15. So really there, I just combined like terms. The second method is the vertical method. And I prefer using this way because it reminds me of addition that I learned in elementary school. Here, I'm going to line up the like terms just like when we lined up the ones and the tens and the hundreds and so on. So this time I'm lining them up by their terms, essentially by their exponents. 
So I line up the constants, add them together. I lined up the x terms, the single x terms, and added them together. And lined up the x to the second power terms and added them together. I could do the same if I say had an x to the third and an x to the fourth. But again, essentially, you're just combining like terms. So whichever method you prefer is how you can do it. Example three, add polynomials. Find each sum. In part A, let's use the horizontal method. And then in part B, we'll use the vertical method. So A, we're going to regroup for the horizontal method. We're going to group our like terms together. So we have 3x squared and x squared grouped together. How many x squareds is that total? We had 3, then we have 1 more, so 4 total. And then if we're looking, we have no single x terms, so we can move on to our numbers, our constants. We have negative 4 and negative 9, so combining those together, we would have negative 13. In B, let's look at using the vertical method. So for this, the vertical method, you're going to need to put it into standard form first, which I guess is the downside of the vertical method. They should be in order. So I have 8 minus x squared. I'm going to rearrange that to put it in standard form, pretty much just switching places. Same with this. I'm going to end up putting this out front so that it's in standard form. Now, if you notice here, we had negative x squared plus 8, and they changed it into negative x squared plus 0x plus 8. Why did they do that? Well, again, remember, you are lining up things that are alike. And we need to be careful that we're not putting things into the wrong alignment. Kind of like if you were trying to, say, add 125, and let's say you wanted to maybe add 15. If you line up the 15 in the wrong spot, so here I had 1, 10, and 5, 1s, but I put the 10s in the 100s column and the 5, 1s in the 10s column, all my totals are thrown off. So if you are missing a term in standard form, so here I had no of the x to the 1 powers, we can put in a placeholder of 0. There's really nothing there, but that will help us remember that we're lining up things with the same value. Now I can go through and just add vertically. So 8 minus 9 is negative 1. 0 plus 4 is 4. Those were x's. Negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. Those are your x squareds. So our final adding would be x squared plus 4x minus 1. As you go through and start to get the hang of it, you don't really need that 0x there, but it is a good reminder to keep your place value. Check your understanding. Find the sums of the polynomials. Then write your answer in standard form. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. So in the first one, we should have got 7y squared plus 13y minus 12. If it ever asks you to write it in standard form, my suggestion for you is to just do it from the greatest power to the least power as you go through. So looking through this, I can see my highest degree is 2. I'm going to just start with those. 20 minus 13 is 7. So I took care of those. Then I would have my y to the 1 powers. 12y plus another y is 13. Took care of those. And then finally, negative 2 plus negative 10. Same sign, keep an add, so negative 12. For the second one, as I go through, I can see first here there's a distribution that needs to happen. So this is really 2b squared plus 4b minus 2. Now I'm going to combine them with what I did before. So again, I see the second degree is my highest. Negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1, which is where we got that from. Then I have minus 4b plus 4b. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. And then plus 2 minus 2 also is 0. So those disappeared. I have nothing left. Just 1b squared, or just b squared. Then finally, on the last one, for this one, I'm going to show vertical because this is a good one with some placeholders. As I'm going through, i put them in standard form. So I have 5f squared minus f plus 5. So I just rearranged that one. Then down here, I have 3f to the third. If I'm lining them up, f to the third doesn't fit with any of those. So I would put it in its new column. Then I'm placing everything else where it goes. So minus f would go here and plus f squared would go there. I'm going to put in some placeholders, so there's nothing there, no more f to the thirds, and there's no more constants on the bottom one. Now I can just add. So 5, negative 1f, minus 1 more f is negative 2f. 5 plus 1 is 6, and 0 plus 3 is 3. So again, I just put each of the different variable powers into its own column, added them together. Then for my final answer, I would just make sure I have my plus signs in here, unless there was a negative, then it's usually already there. Let's learn. Subtracting polynomials. For subtracting, you can pretty much use the same methods as addition after you change the second polynomial, the one that's being subtracted, to its additive inverse. To do that, all you're going to do is change it to the opposite of what it was so you can add. So let's look at method one. Again, it's the horizontal method. We're going to do this by doing the additive inverse. So here I can see I'm subtracting 
I don't want to subtract. I want to add. So I'm going to change that to add and then change everything inside here to the opposite. So plus negative 2x. Opposite of plus is minus 8x squared. Opposite of plus minus 20. So every sign is just the opposite of what it was. Now that I've done that, I don't need to subtract anymore. And I'm right back to adding. So now I just combine like terms. We can also use the vertical method to subtract. And again, it's just as fast to do it as the additive inverse. Then we can combine terms. So here you can see when we're doing it, they took the second part that was subtraction and changed it to the opposite to add. And everything now is the opposite sign of what it was. If any of these had been like, say, minus 2x, then when we change it, it would now become plus 2x, the opposite of what's there. These just all happen to be adding. We're going to change it to the opposite of whatever we see. And then one other thing, as we're going through with adding and subtracting, this down here is an important thing to remember. In elementary school, when you were learning about adding and subtracting, when you add a number with a number, you get another number. When you add an even number to an even number, you get an even number. Those kinds of rules apply to polynomials as well. If you add a polynomial to another polynomial, you're going to get a different polynomial, but that's pretty much it. The variables are not changing. The exponents are not changing. It's just like adding and subtracting with your ones and your tens and your hundreds that you did in elementary school. Example four, subtract polynomials horizontally. So find 6x minus 11 minus 2x minus 19. So to do this, we see the minus here that tells us we're subtracting. So we want to do the additive inverse. We're going to add and then do the opposite of this. So minus 2x and then the opposite of minus is now plus with the number. That's our additive inverse. So you can see they put that right here. Now we can group and combine like terms. So if we put our x's together, we have 6x plus negative 2x. In total, that would be 4x. 6 minus 2 is 4. And negative 11 plus 19 is 8. So subtracting this, we would end up with 4x plus 8. Example 5, subtract polynomials vertically. Just like before, when we're subtracting, the first thing we should do is add the opposite. So negative 7x minus, oops, so plus 3x squared, almost didn't do the opposite there. Then plus should be minus 14. Now I'm going to use this so I can add. And then don't forget, when you're doing it vertically, things need to be put into standard form. So I'm going to add vertically. They're in standard form. Notice here we put in a placeholder for x squared. There are no x squares in the first one. Now we can just combine them vertically. So I'm adding 2 plus negative 14, or just 2 minus 14 is negative 12. 1 plus negative 7, or 1 minus 7, is negative 6 with the x, because that was our term. 0 plus 3 is 3 with our x to the second powers. So if we check and put it back together, this is our polynomial that we would get. Check your understanding. Subtract each of the polynomials and write your answer in standard form. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. First one, we have 4z squared minus 7z minus 5. So we should be adding the opposite. Oh, almost did it again. This was minus. Should be now plus. Now if I'm combining like terms, let's cross that out so we don't accidentally use it. I have 1z squared here and 3 more. So there's our 4z squares. Positive 2 minus 9 is going to be our negative 7. And then there was no 0 to combine with the negative 5 there. So that just stays. For the second one, again, add the opposite. So in the first one, we have 7r squared there plus 16 gives us 23. Positive 8r plus 7 more is positive 15r. And then negative 14 plus 3 is negative 11. For the last one, again, add the opposite. So there you can see I just changed it to plus and then made everything the opposite of what it was. Negative 1h squared plus negative 5h squared. Negative 1 minus 5 is negative 6. So done with those. Positive 1h minus 2h, so we could have just combined those to begin with, is negative 1h. Then minus 8 more h's is negative 9h. And then finally, the only constant we have is that plus 2. So there's really plus 0 over here. Together they make plus 2. And again, as I said before, I intentionally went from highest power to lowest power when I was combining their like terms. Because when I do it that way, my answer is automatically in standard form. Because that has to go from highest to lowest power. 